I would just like to make our community a bit more accessible. And I think that it can be if people integrate the idea of accessibility. A lot of able-bodied architects, they miss the simple things. I hope to bring a different viewpoint. My outlook now, compared to six years ago, I would say is really good. I've had time to accept that I'm going to be in a wheelchair, most likely for the rest of my life. I hope to just achieve the things I want to achieve. My name is Gabrielle, but people call me Gabby. Today is the celebration of my 18th birthday. For me, 18 means that I'm an adult and I'm, I need to be fully independent. It looks amazing. It's amazing, eh? Yeah. The pretty flowers on it. So tonight's Gabby's 18th birthday party. She turned 18 last week and we're having her party tonight with close friends and family. You can it. carry it into the venue because I don't want responsibility for holding on to it. And I guess it's a good opportunity to pull our friends together and thank them for the part they've played in Gabby's journey. Apparently I've got a speech to do, so <laughs> I'll just, um, yeah, I'll just wing it as I usually do with those sort of things, so. Gabby is very clear that she doesn't want to say a speech, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, we'll say something. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a milestone for us. I would say that I'm a pretty mature person now, but when I turn 18, you have that label on you. You are an adult, so you have to be, like, mature. I think that I'm in a pretty good place with my life. I know, like, what I want to do when I leave school and the things I want to achieve in the future. We just want to say a little something really quickly to acknowledge Gabby's 18th birthday. One of my biggest goals is to go to the Paralympics. That would be a dream come true, I think. And also, I have a goal of like becoming an architect and focusing more on the accessibility side of things. Just a big thanks to obviously all our families first, um, but then all the people that have come along the way, uh, along the way and contributed to her life. Cheers. Cheers. Gabby is very determined. She's passionate. She has lots of things that she wants to achieve. She works hard. She's also a teenager that can be quite stroppy. <laughs> when I set my mind to something, I want to try my very best to achieve it. Well done. Yeah, I'm very excited to be an adult, I think. Prior to being in a wheelchair, I played a lot of netball. I played for my school, my club, and made it into the rep team. So there's three different teams I was playing for. Offside. Offside wing defence, how cool. I had huge aspirations to be a silver fan. I w looked up to a lot of them, and yeah, it was just my goal to represent New Zealand in netball. In 2016, I was diagnosed with transverse myelitis, which is inflammation of the spinal cord, and that, for me, caused paralysis below that level of inflammation. It's left me with a permanent disability. A couple of weeks before I was diagnosed, I had a cold. After I had recovered from that cold, I played a netball tournament, and afterwards my back was like quite sore and I just thought that I pulled a muscle or something because I was I had played a lot of netball that day. I remember looking at my foot and thinking, why can't I move my toes right now? And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, why can't I move my ankle? And then why can't I bend my knee? We went to the A and E, we were sent off to Middlemore and then transferred to Starship where she went, had an MRI and she was diagnosed with transverse myelitis. Then we had five weeks having treatment in Starship. You're reliant on the doctors telling you what you need to do and you do it. And Gabby did everything that was asked of her without question. The new normal for me was learning how to function in a wheelchair. I struggled with it a lot at first, knowing that I wouldn't play netball again, but also at that point, I still had the hope that I would walk again. I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna be able to walk, so I'll still be able to be a silver fan. That was 
pretty hard to get my head around at first. Um, but now I look back and I know that it happened to me for a reason and I wouldn't have discovered all this other stuff. Um, like I'm playing in a wheelchair. Obstruction goalkeeper with your arms. It was the worst thing that's ever happened in our life, you know, and, and I guess that's a sign of Gabby's resilience and determination as well, because we've gone from that to what she's doing now. The worst moment in our life has been turned into Gabby living her best life. So at the moment, I'm still living at home with my parents and my sister. But I do hope to, like, explore the option of moving out of home and becoming, like, fully independent and, like, living my life, really. Gabby's independence, it's about being able to not rely on us to take her somewhere or do something for her. At the moment, she's working on the driving. So, you know, once she gets a restricted licence, she'll be able to take herself to training. Um, take yourself places, take yourself to go meet friends, to get that independence and not have to ask mum and dad for, for rides everywhere. So my cars have been made accessible, accessible by having hand controls put in. Um, and it's, they're pretty easy to use. I just have one hand on here and one hand on my steering wheel. Um, and my accelerator is this trigger here. Currently I'm on my learner's driver's licence, but now it's at a point where I'm hoping to sit my restricted in a few months, hopefully. For me, getting my restricted would be almost life-changing. I think it would give me full independence, really. My dad has helped me with all the basics with learning how to drive. I think from what he's told me, he would describe my driving skills as pretty good. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. She's a really good driver. It quite surprised me, actually, how easy it was. Yeah. She's grown so much just over the last year. I've really seen that change in her, where she's wanted to do things more herself, become more independent. So I think going to uni next year and, and having that independence, she's definitely ready for it. We have a lot of accessibility issues in our world and like communities and stuff like that. Just little things that most people wouldn't pick up on. Bumpy terrain where the concrete's all cracked and stuff like that, that's a great opportunity for someone in a wheelchair to, to fall out. Often the accessible routes are very long and often it's hard to find as well. Like on the building code they say that the accessibility route has to be easily navigated, but it's often not. Stairs are very frustrating. <laughs> like, if I come around a corner to where I need to go and I see stairs, I just, you know, it's just, it's frustrating. Um, and then I have to go find different ways to try and get where I need to go, which is a pain. Personally, I feel that the disabled community is not fully integrated into the community. And a big part of that is accessibility and how easy it is for us to navigate around the community. Just like everyone, we deserve our independence and we deserve being able to go out and do our own thing without needing like a caregiver or someone with us. She says that she wants to be an architect and I can absolutely see that that's what she'll be. The struggles that she's experienced in a wheelchair and the frustration, she's like, I have the ability to be able to change this. I can contribute to making this better. Accessibility is easy when you think about it first. When you leave it to the last minute, that's when it becomes a challenge. But if you think about it first, and if it's the first design aspects, then it's easy. When I go into architecture and really bringing this idea of accessibility to the front of their minds, and that accessibility needs to be well thought about because it's important. I would say that I'm a pretty independent person. In the morning, I usually get up, get dressed, have some breakfast, just get ready for school, pack my bag and that sort of stuff. It takes us about like half an hour to drive to school from my house, um, so we leave quite early in the morning. I currently go to Packingham College. I'm in year 13, which is my last year.
post-injury, I think it's quite different because people view you in a different way, um, especially at my intermediate school when they saw me before I was in a wheelchair, then also after. I think for them it took some adjusting as well because they had to, especially my classmates, had to learn how to function with someone in a wheelchair going around in the classroom as well. I remember being very nervous to go out in public when I first was in a wheelchair. Just like people staring at you, like little kids, they don't understand what a wheelchair is. Um, and I remember being very anxious, like having people look at me and it's like, oh, can you just not look at me? <laughs> um, I'm no different to other people. The subjects I'm currently taking at school is art history, design, maths, health and DVC, which is technical during and it would be my favourite one. I like technical during in my DVC class because I get to problem solve and design things that people haven't thought of necessarily, um, especially around accessibility and how it can be accessible for some all different disabilities, not just one in particular. As soon as you get over a metre high here, mm. I know it's a real pain, but you're going to have to have a handrail. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. And is this a ramp or is yeah, it steps? it's a ramp. Yeah, so you've got to think, how do you get down to... Oh, no, hang on, that one comes down to here. For what reason? It'll just be lower, to like, closer yeah. to the water. I want to go into architecture when I leave school, but focusing more on the accessibility side of it because I think that I could really make an impact. Little things are missed by lots of architects because they obviously haven't had the experience. So I look at, like, for example, the weight of a door and how heavy that is to open for someone in a wheelchair or, like, little lips um, to get in and out onto a deck or something. Usually accessibility is the first thing I think about when I have to go to a public place, like, oh, can I get into it? I think our community can be more accessible to allow people with disabilities to be fully integrated into our community. So we're currently in my garage at home and I'm doing wheelchair racing training for my rollers. I've been doing wheelchair racing for about three years now and competitively racing two athletic seasons um, so far. I'm currently training at home three times a week, and then I go once a week on the track. And I'm also doing once a week at the gym. So sport for me has been a great escape to get away from schoolwork. Um, sometimes that can be stressful, so I go and train and that's a good way to get my mind off some things. I'm hoping to travel the world doing wheelchair racing, racing at different comps, and hopefully one day getting to the Paralympics in 2028. That's, that's my goal anyway. Education for me is really important, it just as much as my sporting side. So it is a bit of a juggle, but one of them is not more important than the other. Going into university next year, I know that my workload is going to increase with the amount of work that I get and assignments and stuff like that. But then also, as I progress in my wheelchair racing, my training for that's also going to increase. So it'll be difficult to right, try to manage both of them, but I think I, if I set out a good routine, I'll be able to do it quite well. So we've come to see Adam at LifeMark to talk about some accessibility and his designs that he's looking over. Gabby! How are you? Great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Cool. Thanks for coming in and checking out the office. LifeMark is established to help assess universally designed or accessible housing. Having future architects like Gabby coming through is amazing. She obviously has a lived experience with a disability, so she's going to bring a completely different perspective to her designs and hopefully influence the, the able-bodied designers who might not be so aware of the additional considerations that someone in a wheelchair might need but also she'll mingle with people with other disabilities as well. So it's not just wheelchair users that benefit from accessibility design, it's a lot of other people as well. Um, what are some of the things that normal architects or spatial designers may like miss? Firstly, I, th I think the main issue is architects design for your standard 30-year-old, six-foot-strong, able-bodied mm -hmm. male. 
Yeah. And I, I think in the last census, it was like one in four New Zealanders have a disability. Mm, yes. So I think it's just acknowledging that there's a lot of people out there with disabilities and they'll be needing better housing. Yes. So I think just the consideration that New Zealand needs more accessible or universally designed housing is probably one of the key things. At school, I'm designing at the moment a uh, hut, so that's like the exterior of my drawing. Well, that interior. looks awesome, really stylish. Yeah, so you've done, you've done a really good job there, like, you know, nice, you know, um, spacious kitchen. You've got a ramp there if, if you, if you need mm -hmm. it because of the site, then you need it. And again, you've, you've put the toilet beside the wall, mm -hmm. sort of like we mentioned, so someone can put a grab rail on the wall later on if they need to, which, which is always good. What do you think the future is for accessible design? I'd love to say it's, it's positive. I'd love to say in, like, 50 years, all the new homes will be accessible. <laughs> Unfortunately, we do have a bit of a battle with a surge to three-storey homes yes, yeah, with exactly. no car parks, yeah. which isn't exactly ideal for us. No. Um, but hopefully we've got some nice young architects coming through who are gonna, yeah. gonna buck that trend and... That's what I plan to do, hopefully. <laughs> Today meeting Adam was really cool and it's really um, cemented the idea that I want to study architecture because I've learnt so much from that short session and I'm excited for university. I love being out on the track and especially seeing all the other athletes out there as well and working hard. You know that everyone on the track has the same intention and it's really cool to train alongside those sorts of people. Did you get a, a push in this week? Mm -hmm. Nice. How long? How long? Uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, cool, cool. Next week, we go to 30. When I was under 17, I got my classification. So I ended up being the fastest T54 under 17 New Zealander to do the fastest, like 100 metres, 200 metres and 400 metres. But I really want us to work on this on this short distances, right? So it's 10s, 30s, 60s and out smack. Three. Push. We've got to try for 20s. I'm Gabby's personal coach as far as her athletics are concerned. We've been coaching her now for going on three, three and a half years. So she started with me at Hellbergs. And up that tempo on that second and third. Yeah, shoulder up. Yeah, I tell you what, this is going to be a quick warm-up. She races every single distance from 100 up to 5,000 metres. Nice, nice technique. One-handed. Brilliant. You gotta save some for the sprints. <laughs> gotta get that bottom part of the push going. Come on. She's always had that competitiveness all through her life, really. I think her determination did help her bounce back when she become paralyzed. Yeah, that's good. Definitely, she was just determined to, to get back to normal. And her wheelchair racing has given her a real focus. Go! Hit! Get down! Longer! Now long! Bang! In three years, she's the New Zealand national record holder for 100, 200 metres. She has qualified twice for the New Zealand nationals. Just go lower. And this year, she's qualified for the Australian champs and raced there in March. Let's try and just keep it smoother, right? I believe she's going to be the fastest in New Zealand ever of her category. We're aiming for under 20 New Zealand record, and ultimately, I want her to go back and win some medals at the Australians. As far as Gabby going to the Paralympics, I'm actually really confident. She's prepared to do the work, she's going to be, have the speed. I think that's an achievable goal. So we're at the AUT City Campus and I'm about to go speak to Anna, the disability service person here at AUT and also Priscilla, one of the lecturers. I'm keen to see the disability side of things and how they'll support me going through AUT. Hi. Hi, I'm Priscilla. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Gabby. Yes, I'm really interested in knowing what are your interests. I have a special interest, obviously, in accessibility. There's like a huge gap with accessibility and buildings and stuff like that. So I'm actually interested if you like cover any of that sort of stuff as well. We're covering that in our paper this semester. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, so issues in terms of accessible design versus universal design mm -hmm. and looking at what could be improved. I think there's so much that we could do to make yeah. places better and yeah, accessible yeah. for all. 
when you make a place accessible, it just benefits everyone. Laser cut, so we have some, yeah, looking at like they did a whole master plan for the whole site. When I did become paralyzed, it, accessibility within buildings really stuck out to me. That's when I started to like join my love of like design and drawing to accessibility and sort of like that. One of the things that um, I usually tell my students is that you always bring your life experience mm -hmm. into yes, your definitely. design. Hi. Hello. I'm Gabby. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I'm Anna. So if we think about how myself and my team can support you in your studies, I believe that you know what's best for you. Mm -hmm. so I know that you're into wheelchair uh, racing. racing yeah. Yes. So do you think that will take you away from your studies at certain times of the year? I think so. Like, uh, my training's quite important. It takes up a lot of time, but also school's important to me as well, so... More and more lecturers are recording themselves. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we can talk with your lecturers. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully, if you cannot be present on the day for a class, you can re-watch or re-listen to the content. Oh yeah, that's really cool. How about getting around, getting around campus? That's probably half the reason I'm choosing to come here as well, because yeah. of the access and stuff, so. Do you feel welcome to reach out to yeah. us? To have, like, that big support system also, almost yeah. around you, so. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Good. Today went really well. I learned a lot. Uh, it's good insight into what I might be doing next year here, and yeah, it's made me very excited. The majority of student services are based in here. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Gabby is ready for her independence and going off to university by herself. Well, my biggest hope is that she enjoys what she's going to do. We'll never know what she would have achieved had this not happened, but the fact that she has gone on to achieve so many things, it's unbelievable. We're all incredibly proud of, of what she's achieved and what she's yet to. She's not planning on stopping anytime soon.